Okay, fight fans and fight fiends, welcome back to Manny's Thoughts. I, of course, Manny MTL or Manny Montreal. Make sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, and obviously, thefightcity.com. So, as usual, I'll give you guys my thoughts on what's going down in the world of combat sports. Let's get started. Okay, so this week we'll start with what's in the news. And obviously, the big announcement's been made. Mayweather versus Berto. It's official. The internet backlash has been significant. Berto himself has announced that he is let down by the fight fans out there. You see, here's the thing. The fight fans are let down by Mayweather. It's not so much against you, Berto. Now, in response to that, I will say this. Ladies and gentlemen, I've already predicted that this would be a problem in one of my past shows when I was mentioning that I hoped and prayed that the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight wouldn't happen because I didn't really see much left for Mayweather after Pacquiao. And it seems like I was right. Now you see, here's the thing. Automatically discounting Berto is just plain mean. And well, the truth is we should be happy for him that at this stage in his career he's going to have one big final chance to make that money maybe put out a performance that'll etch his name in the history books of time. Because you see, here's the thing. When the Pacquiao-Mayweather fight was announced, I called for hope. Hope that Pacquiao would uh, stop this farce that I call the Mayweather campaign. Now, um, I, I'm not dismissing the man's talent in the ring, and there is a period of time where I really, really enjoyed Mayweather. There is also a period of time where I've given up on Mayweather. Now, um, back to what I was saying, basically, I had called for hope in the Manny Pacquiao fight. Well, this time around, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say it's more than hope this time. You know what this is? This is poetic justice. You see, I'm happy everyone's discounting Berto. I'm happy for Berto that he's realized that everyone's discounting him. That everyone's putting this fight aside. That people are claiming they won't order it. When we all know the truth, it's still going to do okay. If Guerrero put on some numbers, then trust me, Berto, specifically this being one of his last fights, it's going to do fine, numbers-wise. But, you see, Berto has a chance. Has a chance to make history. Has a chance to make a really big check. And hell, if he were to pull something miraculous off, like a big KO, or even a really good decision win, we all know that would mean an automatic rematch. Now, all of this being positive for Berto. So I say, why not? Poetic justice, let it be. Mayweather picked, hand-picked his last opponent for this contract with Showtime. This is what he is feeding us. And wouldn't it be great if the taste just came back and bit him in the ass. Speaking of fun, the Fight City, this week is a big week for us. Monday is a media day for the PBC event in Montreal. Luce Butte's return and Elidur Alvarez fighting. Um, then Wednesday, we've got another media day. Uh, Monday's the public workout. Wednesday's the media day. And then lastly, Friday, we've got the weigh-ins. I will try and be at all of those. Make sure you check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and all of that. Make sure you check out the Fight City, because obviously we got fresh and daily posts on that site. And um, it's, it's just a big fight week here in Montreal. And I've been honored and privileged to hang out at the Grant Brothers, as you guys know. And uh, I got first-hand uh, stuff on Luce Butte's return. It's just been really, really fantastic for me to see. I've been so lucky and privileged, mainly because I got to see a guy of that caliber get himself ready. And I got to see the air and the atmosphere of the gym change from his presence. It's uh, been a very neat and cool experience for me, something I'll carry with me for a very long time. Now, uh, as for the fights themselves, it's a terrific card from PBC. Now, not to mention that it's going to be a great weekend of boxing from PBC. So, um, for all of that, of course, go to the Fight City. I digress. Let me get started. This week, this Friday night, live and free, on Spike, PBC on Spike, that is, Steve Cunningham versus Antonio Tarver. We're going to get some finality from this fight. We're going to get some results. 
A lot of people say Antonio Tarver should not be fighting, and USS Cunningham has had more than one chance to make uh, an impact on the scene. And, well, I mean, a poor performance here on either guy's side would definitely be something final. Now, the rest on the undercard is just fantastic. It's a terrific night, Friday night on Spike with PBC. Now, this leads me to Saturday, here in Montreal, home of the Fight City. What a fantastic card they've delivered us. Now, sad news here in Quebec, because, I mean, it's Quebec and we like things difficult. For some reason, it will be on pay-per-view. But to the rest of the world, it's going to be live and free on NBC Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, if you got half a brain, go to the internet. It won't cost you a thing. Here's the thing. It is a fantastic card. We're talking 5,000 to 9,000 people in there. It's going to be a small show because it's for TV. What was even better about this is that more than half the tickets were under $100. Most of the tickets, a good portion of the tickets, were somewhere around $35. This is how you give boxing back to the fans. The real people that want to see fights will be more than happy to pay that price and what's good about it is is that people will go in groups it's just a great atmosphere and a great night of fights now uh cap that off with the fact that they've given us a terrific card first off eve ulysses jr super lightweight 8-0 and with five ko's he was supposed to fight at the last golden boy event but his opponent seemed to have run out of the building so no fight for him finally get to see him fight this kid is fast and fun the fight will be short, but it will give you fireworks guaranteed. Next up, Bogdan Dinu. Bogdan is a heavyweight Romanian, 28 years old, with 12 fights under his belt, 0 losses, 8 KOs. This guy's a monster. I've heard a lot of good things about him. Looking forward to seeing him fight live. The heavyweight scene here is starting to bubble, so it's a great time for us to see another heavyweight. Uh, next up, my boy, Eric Bazinian, also 8-0 with 5 KOs, gonna make a big appearance, a big splash at the Bell Center, looking forward to his fight, it might be a swing fight, hopefully it gets televised and you guys get to see what I've been seeing, this kid is ready, he is a real professional in there, he is mature beyond his years, only 20 years old, this kid's the future, mark my words, Eric Bazinian, he will be there. Hopefully we get to see him fight. Now, uh, main eventing, technically. Elador Storm Alvarez, because it's for a title. Now, Alvarez is interesting, mainly because he's 17-0. and 0. He's uh, another interesting light heavyweight that's in the division right now, being talked about amongst Kovalev and Jean Pascal and Adonis. So, um, they've given him a real test here. Now, his opponent, who's ranked 13th on uh, the WBC, and I believe about 6th with the IBO, is, uh, you know, no joke himself. You see, his uh, opponent's name is Isidro Pirieto, who's 20-0 with 20 KOs. This guy's a beast in his own right. Now, uh, he's 29 years old, and this Argentinian isn't coming here to make Alvarez look good. This is a sincere test to see whether Alvarez belongs to, with those names, Adonis and Kovalev and Beterbiev. Now, um, I predict a big, big win from Alvarez. It's going to be a tough fight, but I see him persevering through it. Much like the Gonzalez-Pascal fight, I do see this going Alvarez's way, though. Now, uh, last but not least, my main event, the return, Lucien Bute. He is fighting Di Luisa. Now, um, got a chance to look into Di Luisa a bit. He is no walk in the park. He is rough. He is very rough and rugged in there. He likes to play dirty a little bit. I've seen him land a couple of headbutts, and uh, he likes to do the double-handed shove. You know, um, it's going to get physical, and uh, technically I think that's a really good thing, because that's what Luchen needs. He needs a sincere fight. Um, you know, no offense to Belanti, but he needs somebody that's going to come at him and uh, make the best come out of him. Now, uh, I've had the privilege, like I've said, to hang out at the Grant Brothers and watch them work with him. And uh, Howard and Otis have poured hours of time and sweat into him. 
and uh, I sincerely believe he is ready for a return back to an older um, way of things, you know, back when he used to have fun. And that's the most important thing here that people don't realize. A lot of people question whether or not he still has a chin or whether it's a physical thing in his back or whether he's had issues with his team or previous management. It, it needed to be fun for him. Nobody wants to be somewhere where it's not fun. And uh, if you're not having fun, you're not going to be yourself and you're not going to perform at your best. So the most important thing is that he wanted to be there. And man, he was there twice a day, six days a week. I, it didn't matter if I missed a day because I'd be able to catch him at night. It was just crazy the amount of work this guy put in. I sincerely think he elevated everybody in that gym's level. Just made everyone better from his presence alone. Um, his work ethic is undeniable, and the man is a true workhorse. I sincerely hope De Luisa comes firing with all his might and that uh, Luchen answers appropriately. So that's it for me this week. Make sure you check out my other shows. Make sure you go to the Fight City on the daily, fresh posts every day. The best fight site out there, bar none. I'm Manny MTL. Make sure you check me out next week. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next week.